I'm Suresh Venkat in conversation with Patrick Hacker, President, University of Delaware. Mr. Hacker, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Right, let me ask you a simple question first. What is the matter with Indian education? What is the matter? Yes, what is wrong with Indian education? Well, please? there are a lot of things first that are great about Indian education. If okay. you think about the students who come to us for graduate school and okay. go on to build great businesses, there are a lot of great things. So right. I think it's easy to focus on the negative, but okay. remember there's a lot okay. of Let's positive. start with what are, what are the great things about the Indian education? From the students that you interact with, what would you outline as the positives of the Indian education system? Students are very well trained technically. Okay. The students are very driven. I think they come to a system that's very competitive and they know how to compete in the okay. global market. One of the concerns that we hear repeatedly about the Indian education system is that students learn by memorizing and by rote and by exams, and they're not really innovative and creative thinkers. Yeah. Would you second that contention that a large part of our education does not produce innovators? Yeah, I would say that's not just an Indian problem, though. I think this is a global okay. problem. What we need to do is make sure that education's interactive. Okay. That is immersing students in real problems and helping them okay. deal with the mess okay. that reality is instead of trying to package it up neatly into algebra problems or chemistry problems for them. Okay. The other concern, of course, is that the things students learn in college have no application in real life when they go out to get jobs. There is an employability gap. It might also be a function of the fact that education institutions seem to operate in isolation from the, yeah. from the job market. How would you say these bridges need to be built based on your experience at the University of Delaware? Well, let me give you one example. So we have a deep relationship with J.P. Morgan Chase, one of the world's leading financial institutions. Okay. Our students do an eight-month internship okay. in a in an office that's literally in one of our buildings. So students leave the classroom, swipe in, they become J.P. Morgan Chase employees. Okay. We want to do more and more of that by students not just learning the theory, but then okay. walking across the hall and practicing and it with practicing leading theory. institutions. And you believe that this combination of theory and practice can actually spark up better, better innovation and better creative Oh, no process. question about it. All right. Let's talk about innovation for one moment. If we were to reimagine the Indian education system to say we need to produce innovators and innovative graduates and creative thinkers, what, is the fun what are the fundamental changes we need to engineer into the system? So I think there's one big fundamental change, that research faculty involved in research need to also be teaching. Okay. This, is one, this is really the secret sauce of American higher education. Okay. So that when students come, they're working with faculty who are creating the new knowledge, and as a result, creating the new businesses. So we have actually two programs at the University of Delaware. We have a spin-out program, where students work with faculty to create businesses and launch them. Okay. We also have a spin-in yeah. program okay. where students work with entrepreneurs on their ideas and with faculty to try to create a new business. All of that interaction is really what I think Indian education needs to move toward. One of the things that India seems to lack is a Stanford University Silicon Valley kind of symbiosis where the university funds uh, finds innovators, trains them, and then funds innovators, and the two systems feed back into each other. Right. We seem to not have that. We have a big software industry, but we don't have an innovation ecosystem in India. Right. How should we build this innovation ecosystem? But see, they, again, you look at a Stanford, look at a University of Delaware. The core are research faculty who are creating those ideas. And, and they're not separate from the okay. teaching. They're not at a research institute that's over here. They are interacting with students every day. Patrick Hucker, you were also one of the key members behind the formation of the Indian School of Business yes. in Hyderabad when you were part of the Wharton faculty. Uh, why did we need one more business school in India? We have thousands of them. Well, it's a very different kind of business school. It's a business school focused on being training students to enter the global marketplace okay. as opposed just to the Indian marketplace. One of the criticisms of MBA education, and typically finance MBA education that we heard in the 2008 crisis, is that business schools are churning out mercenaries with no sense of ethics who will do anything pretty much for a quick buck. Right. Do you think that's changed? I think what, yeah, I think the crisis has changed things. It's okay. sobered people and it's made people look at themselves saying, I want to be a professional. Let me give you one example. So years ago when I was Dean of Wharton, I, in a previous economic collapse, I was meeting an alum on Sand Hill Road in Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. And I said, why are you still here? He said, well, look at all the people around me. They've left. They've left for the quick buck. I'm still here. I said, well, why are you still here? He said, look behind me. I'm looking at all these little pieces of loose sight, uh, the tombstones of creating companies. He said, see, they were in it for the money. I'm in it to create great businesses. Okay. Uh, that's what we need to get back to. Business create students who want to create great businesses. Okay. What is the role of ethics in MBA education, for instance? Oh, it's critical. Okay. It's absolutely critical. Are like students any profession, taking it seriously in the U.S.? They do, but we have to reinforce it. We have to remind them it's not your money. Okay. Whether, even if you're CEO of a company, it's not your it's money. Not your it's money. your investor's money, and you have to act as a professional. Okay. My last question to you, Patrick Hunker. India, US, the, India and the U.S. have had great education ties over the years. Yes. A lot of students from here going there, a lot of universities from there coming to India. Yes. 
how do you see the future of this stage? Is it healthy? Is it going to grow in the future? Do you see any roadblocks to the... Well, I think it's going to grow, and I think what folks do here at NASCOM is going to help it grow. Okay. Instead of students coming back and forth geographically, we can also break down those barriers by using IT, okay. by using interactive learning technologies and distance learning technologies. We're doing this right now at universities okay. all across the world. Final question, one of the challenges that in the Indian education system faces is taking education to what we call the bottom of the social pyramid, yeah. of delivering it to the poorest of the poor. Uh, what, what, what does your experience tell you? What should the Indian government and Indian industry be doing about this? I think, they again, they need to invest in technology solutions. Okay. A lot of the education we can deliver, I think Rosetta Stone for language in the U.S., interactive learning technologies can okay. teach basic skill as well as somebody in front of you. Okay. That doesn't remove the need for a teacher who can inspire, coach, and mentor, but, but you can do both. Okay. And that's how you lower the cost to get education more affordable for everyone. Okay. All right, so that's Patrick Hacker, President of the University of Delaware. Patrick Hacker, thank you for talking thank to you. us. Thank you. Thank you for watching.